Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Liam and this is Grammar Simple, the channel that makes English grammar simple. Today we have an intermediate lesson for you. This is the second video of a three-part series about the different moods in English. If you haven't seen my first video about the indicative mood, watch it here first. This video is about the second mood in English, the imperative mood. So, if you want to learn English grammar, stay tuned. Okay, the imperative mood for commands and requests and things like advice, suggestions, or warnings. Let's begin. Let's do a little review first about moods in English. There are three moods in English. The indicative mood, the imperative mood, and the subjunctive mood. A mood is similar to a mode or category. A mood is the form a verb takes to show how the sentence is to be understood by the listener. What is the context? This can be a fact or an opinion. In this case, we use the indicative mood to talk about facts or opinions and to ask questions. Again, if you don't know the indicative mood, watch my video. It can also be a command or request. For this, we use the imperative mood. And this can also be conditionality. For conditions, abstract ideas, we use the subjunctive mood. Look for my video about the subjunctive mood coming soon. Basically, a mood shows when a verb is expressing something, something in particular, something specific. This could be facts or opinions, commands or requests, or conditions. This video will discuss the imperative mood. In English, the imperative mood uses the bare infinitive form of the verb. Okay, what is the bare infinitive form? Bare is similar to naked. This means the infinitive form of the verb without to. Let's look at the infinitive form. To close, to go, to turn off, to do. This is the normal infinitive form. To close the door, to go to bed, to turn off the TV, to do your homework. What is the bare infinitive form? Easy. No to. Close the door, go to bed, turn off the TV, do your homework. The imperative mood expresses commands and requests. 
Let's look at some examples. Close the door. It's cold outside. Close the door is a command. It's cold outside is a statement about a fact. For facts, remember, we use the indicative mood. So in this sentence, there are two moods. A command, close the door, you are telling someone to do something because it's cold outside and you don't want the cold air coming inside. To close the door, it's cold outside. Not correct. Remember, we use the bare infinitive form with, uh, sorry, we use the bare infinitive form, yes, with the imperative mood. Go to bed. It's late. Command. Go to bed. Maybe your mother or father told you this when you were a child. It's the same in English. Go to bed. It's late. To go to bed. It's late. Not correct. The subject in sentences using the imperative mood is implied. You do not need to say the subject. You can say the name of the person you are talking to, but do not say you. Close the door, Liam. It's cold outside. This is correct. Close the door, you. It's cold outside. This is awkward, strange. It's not correct. You close the door. It's cold outside. Also not correct. Let's look at some more examples. Turn off the TV is a command. You are telling someone to do something. Turn off the TV. Turn the music down. Do your homework. Let's meet for dinner later. Call me when you have finished work. When John arrives at the party, hide and be quiet. It's a surprise. These are all commands. You are telling someone to do something. Close the door, please. It's cold outside. This is a request. Please go to bed. It's late. Also a request. Turn off the TV, please. Please turn off the TV. Both are correct. It's the same meaning. So these are all requests. Requests and commands are similar. However, commands are authoritative, meaning you expect to be obeyed. Use an exclamation point in your informal writing to make a, your command more forceful, more authority. Go to bed. It's late. Listen to me and do what I say. 
An exclamation point means you raise your voice when speaking. This means you speak louder. Therefore, commands are stronger than requests. Do what I say. Requests are more polite. So, in English, we say, please. Requests, therefore, are weaker. Please do what I say. A request is similar to asking someone to do something. Asking someone is a question, but a request is a statement, usually. Close the door, please. It's cold outside. Could you please close the door? It's cold outside. It's the same. The imperative mood also expresses advice, instructions, and warnings. Let's look at some examples. Advice. Drive carefully. Maybe you are telling your son or daughter who is a new driver, they are leaving to go somewhere, and you say, hey, hey, wait, wait, drive carefully. You want them to do this. It's your advice. It's not a command, drive carefully. It can be, but usually this is more advice. Similar to, you should drive carefully. Live in the moment. This is a common expression in English. Live in the moment, live in the now. It means um, be present. Don't think about the past too much. Don't think about the future too much because you will not be happy uh, unless you don't forget to stop and smell the roses, right? Very important to enjoy your life now. Treat others the way you want to be treated. This is a golden rule right? Um, also, this is advice. Maybe your mother and father told you this, and maybe you will tell your children this. It's good advice, I think. Treat others, other people, the way you want to be treated. It is common to use the verb try when giving advice with the imperative mood. Try to be on time. Try not to burn the lasagna again. Always try your best and you will succeed. Always try it before you buy it. That's good advice. <laughs> okay. Let's look at some examples for instructions. Boil water, pour it into a cup, drop in the tea bag, then wait three to five minutes. Voila, you have a nice cup of tea. Enter your email address to sign up for our newsletter. You have probably seen this many times on websites. Write your name at the top of the page and read the instructions before you answer the questions. Right? Your teacher has told you this many times in your life, right? Go to the supermarket and get eggs, cheese, ham, 
tomatoes, and spinach. So this one is instructions for like a shopping list, a grocery list. Drive west for three kilometers and turn right on Hawthorne Street. Okay, examples of warnings. Warnings are statements that indicate a possible danger, problem, or other unpleasant, not pleasant situation. Stay back. There's been an accident. Caution, avoid injury, watch your step. This is very common with signs, traffic signs and signs uh, outside buildings or properties that might be dangerous. Caution, avoid injury, watch your step. Okay, there's our first bare infinitive. There's our second bare infinitive. Avoid. Avoid injury. Watch. Watch your step. Watch your step means be careful where you walk. Okay, watch for ice. Beware of dog. Swim at your own risk. Why? No lifeguard on duty. Okay, swim is the bare infinitive. Electrical hazard, keep out. What is the bare infinitive? Well, electrical is an adjective. Hazard is a noun. Keep out is the warning, bare infinitive. Okay, everybody, that's it for our lesson today about the imperative mood. Like this video, subscribe to the channel, and watch my video about the subjunctive mood next. This is my command. No, it's my request or advice. Please watch my video about the subjunctive mood next. My name is Liam. This is Grammar Simple, the channel that makes English grammar simple. I hope you learned something today. I will see you next time. Bye.